You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody, and guess what? It is a Freaker Friday. Woohoo! Not that Friday really makes a whole lot of difference to me anymore, but hey, it's Freaker Friday. Well, yeah, it does, because you got Ponder Gander in the morning, and you got Grim and Moose Girl late in the evening, and I'm somewhere in the middle just kind of being wee. <laughs> oh well y'all pay attention to me anyway and i still haven't figured out why yet but ah it all wakes it all wakes um goober is smelling something like raid are they are they doing that geoengineering in your neck of the woods is that what's going on goober i haven't been outside today i had a day off and so i took an off day <laughs> Oh, I needed it too. Man, yesterday I busted my butt, wore myself out, all that fun stuff. So yeah. Oh, and I just lost a stalker over here on Twitter. How did that happen? Holy smokes, Batman. Oh, well. Guess what? Y'all are listening on uh, reallibertymedia.com channel 10 or on the RLM Spreaker channel. And if you are listening on the Spreaker channel, you need to come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back. Because quite frankly, my internet has been really wonky lately. I mean, it's not the greatest to start with. But it's been really wonky lately. And so, you know, I, ca- I can't chit-chat with you on Spreaker and do the show at the same time lots of lag going on so come on over to rlm and if you want to say something to me say it in there and everybody also go yeah what they said (laughs) that's pretty much the way it works oh well um over here on twitter thank you barman for tweeting out and letting everybody know that uh yeah i am live and in person on this freaker friday night and um let's see that's twitter and over here on uh minds once again thank you rlm and tw- and barman for letting everybody over here know that yeah the wild woman's on on facebook man oh man the rlm page on facebook is really starting to pick up and i think uh, bo diddy has something to do with that i think he's got lots of friends and he's posting stuff in there and lots of friends are coming over and it's like booyah starting to see some real action going on there so that's really pretty cool by the way if you're listening paul rogers happy birthday hon um you young whippersnapper i think he's a couple years younger than me so, you know, it's fun to call him a young whippersnapper. And I shared a post earlier today. I hate words that are the same, but are pronounced differently. You know, like read and read, or live and live, or taxation and theft. You know? <laughs> That's a Mark Passio meme, by the way. And yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, so, hey there, everybody over here on Fakey Book as well, if you are listening in. What is that? Never extinguish the fire of fitness in your daughter's heart. Ooh, that's true. Don't want to do that. Um, over here on realliberty.org. Once again, Grim's letting everybody know that I'm live. Thank you, Grim. Once again, Grim's just everywhere. He's going around in front of me prepping everybody so that those that don't want to pay attention, they can go, oh, shit, it's her again. Quick, shut everything off. (laughs) And then there's some that go, oh, hey, I need a laugh. Come on over. It's all good. Um, So, hey, everybody over here on realliberty.org. I see Rob Works is here as well as Bob Renner and Bobby Bain. Got an RBB going on here. Um, a Rob, a Bob, and a Bobby. Cool. Cool. And on this effing site, Freedoms Network. Hey there, lovely Estrella. I see you posting like crazy again. Ooh, and the workers in Mexico are striking against Coca-Cola. Booyah. Yeah. 
give them the what for and then some. Grimmy was also over here and letting everybody know that, yeah, guess who? Guess who? Thanks, Grim. Thanks, Grim. You're just so awesome. And now to the place where you need to be if you want to give me some static. Or if you just want to say, hey, or whatever. Come on over to Real Liberty Media. Think of a nickname. Join a chat. I'm hanging out in there, and and the I'm using the Adi IRC, A D I IRC, and so it flashes for me and lets me know when someone uses my nickname in there. So cool. In any case, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Why? Because he lets everybody know what's going on. That's why. Cowboy Tech is also here. Hey, Cowboy, how you doing? Hope you're still hearing pleasant voices. And next up is the RLM God, Grimner, don't you know? Closely followed by the lovely Moose Goyle, who's, uh, they're going to be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball. So yeah, good time will be had by all. Then there's the lovely Kate down in Florida. Where, are you still having stormy weather, sweetheart? You were for a couple of days there, but, eh, you know, we're supposed to be getting that, you know, and, and we've already got mud and slush and melting snow, and I mean, I still got a boatload of snow, but it's melting, and so it's making everything really muddy soupy out here. <coughs> Excuse me. Swallow and breathe at the same time. You know, sometimes I need to remember how to do things properly. In any case... Um, now they're saying that we're supposed to have rain and thunder boomers coming in. It's like, really? <laughs> the snow hasn't melted yet. What the hell? <coughs> Excuse me. Damn it. Damn it. Swallowing and <clears throat> breathing and talking. I need to remember multitasking is not necessarily my friend. <laughs> Oh, well, back to saying, hey, I hope you're not getting stormed on, Miss Kate, or you either, Miss Moose, because your storms dump lots of white stuff. Um, I also see Asmo is here. Hey, Asmo, how you doing, hun? As well as Beth Z. Hey, Beth, welcome back. And looky there, Chal Sedoni is also here, as well as yours truly. I be Don C is here. Hey, Don, love the pic of the puppy. They're very cute. Very cute. I love puppies, but I already got enough critters. <laughs> I also see Meister Brower is in the chat as well as Ponder Gander. Just for those of you that don't know, that's Vinny's alter ego. We haven't decided if that's his evil twin or not yet, but that is Vinny. Wink, wink. I also see the lovely Rain is in the chat as well as Rob Works, who fired up that bubbler. Booyah! Thank you, Rob. Truly appreciate the bubbler. Oh, been nice two days now. Sweet. Trying not to be a weather snob. <laughs> I'll have some really nice weather here someday, I'm sure. <laughs> It'll get here eventually, but not tomorrow, because I hear tomorrow's supposed to have gusts of up to 50 mile an hour. yippee i -yay, cow patty. Oh, well, back to saying, hey, hi, Romes, how you doing, darling? I also see Phantom, the creator of my awesome intro. Thank you once again, Phantom. Beetle, I see you, Beetle. You buzzing over there? You got bumblebees or something? Bzzz. And looky, there's Cycles. Cycles is here. And Cycles, I don't blame you for not waking up, Flasher. You know, one Cycles is, is better than a cranky flasher any day <laughs> i love you sister um i also see cyborg noodle may you be touched by his noodly goodness cyborgian cybernetic noodliness even and happy pasta fairy and holy day seeing as how it is friday arg dakota is also here as well as frumpy and gooberzilla gooberzilla i hope you don't ever get lost in space honestly I hope you don't. Um, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2, who's still going through the whole knee rehab thing. You'll be fine, honey. You'll be fine. I know. You the man. Looky there. We got some JJs from over there in Scotland is here. Hey, JJs. How you doing, hon? And Kozu is also in the house. Um, 
Oh, that is true, Circles. I hadn't thought of that. No such thing as bad weather, only wrong clothes. <laughs> That is so true. Gosh darn. Of course, you know, she also told me a couple years ago that um, jackets uh, for children are basically, uh, when the parents are cold, they put the jackets on their kids. You know, something along those lines. She said it way more eloquently than I could, but it it was like, wow. Okay, I resemble that. <laughs> Because whenever I'm cold, I was always putting jackets on my kids. And then next thing you know, they's running around in shorts and barefoot. And I'm going, you're going to catch your death of cold. What the hell is a death of cold? <laughs> is that like a people sickle? Um, curious. Oh, well. Hi, Nenson Dubois. Thank you once again for the facial expression exercise. And Pom 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 sauce is also here as well as sock puppet. Sock puppet's not going to be a um, one of them. They're weather people, neither weather snobs, neither. Although socks also in Florida um, may not be aware of the coming ice age. Oh, honey, I got ice age going on around my house. Because when it melts during the day, then it becomes a sheet of ice in the morning. And yeah, then it becomes, let's see if, make sure nobody's outside with a video or a means to video me as I try to walk across this. Because <laughs> I'm sure it is, yeah. Yeah, when grown-ups are cold, kid have to put on jackets. Very true, Circles. Very true. Okay. Y'all are silly in the chitty chat. Um, Tech Man is also here. And to round out the crew, the one and only Uno. And that's what Uno means. Duh. One. Uno. Uno, dos, tres. See, now I'm going to be showing off. In any case, I said that today is a happy Pastafarian day. But did you know? Did you know? I found out over on Twitter. Today is International Woman Day. As if we needed to have a freaking day for that. But today is International Woman Day. And so that made me curious. When is International Man Day? Or Men Day? Mandate? 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 I don't know. But so I I went on my trusty little duck duck go. And I typed in when is Men Day? And then I typed in um, international holidays. And guess what I got? I got a calendar. <laughs> So we're going to go through these because we've already been through a whole bunch of them and we didn't even know it, or at least I didn't even know it. So too late. You can't celebrate them now. But did you know that Tuesday, January the 1st was Global Family Day? I did not know that. And Friday, January the 4th was World Braille Day. And then Friday the 11th of January was International Thank You Day. Apparently that's the only day on the planet that you could say thank you. On Wednesday, January the 30th was World Leprosy Day. Is that one of those days where everybody is a leper? A leper? Alep Aleppo. Aleppo. Isn't that a town? Hmm. On Tuesday, February 12th was Darwin Day. Those of you that are applying for the Darwin Awards, you can only do that on February the 12th this year. Sorry, you missed the boat. Can't try any more rest of the year. Thursday, February 21st was International Mother Language Day. Oh. <laughs> Dang it, I missed out on that because there were days when I talked like a sailor. I wonder how you're supposed to talk when you have a mo International Mother Language Day. Hmm. February, Friday, February 22nd was World Thinking Day. That was the only day set aside throughout the year that you're allowed to think. Now you're not supposed to be doing that anymore. It's according to the calendar. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. March 1st was International Day of the Seal. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know. I don't think it was that seal. Maybe it's the seal of approval. Do they get seals to come up and approve you? Hmm. On Friday, March the 8th. Hey, that's today. It's International Women's Day. I get to be an international woman today. Let me tell you. Next week, Friday, is International Red Nose Day. <laughs> so apparently you're supposed to get socked in the nose or go out and get a sunburn on your nose. Wednesday, March the 20th. 
is World Frog Day. Now, what did frogs do to get a day this year? Besides, don't croak on that day, froggies. Please don't. On Thursday, March the 21st, is World Down Syndrome Day. Who comes up with these? I'm just curious because I could think of some days that would make a hell of a lot more sense than these. How about World Day to Not Give a Shit Day? That sounds like a hell of a good day. I do that a lot of days. <laughs> Why do you only get one day for that? How about Friday, March 22nd is World Water Day? Do we think about the water that day? And then Saturday, the 23rd, is World Meteo Meteorological Day. So, wow, we got, holy crap, five days in a row where it's, because the, then Sunday, the 24th, is World TB Day. What's the deal with March that it gets to have five days in a row that are world days? Huh? What did March do? Did it bribe somebody? And then... It also gets to have on March the 30th, Earth Hour. Now, wait a minute here. How come everything else gets to have a day, but the Earth only gets to have an hour? What's the deal, Pickle? I don't get it. April 2nd is International Children's Book Day. Why don't you have International April Fool's Day on April, April 1st? Because that's the day where everybody is allowed to be a fool. The rest of the year, it's really not allowed, but you do it anyway. But April Fool's Day, you're allowed to. Why isn't that on here? April the 7th is World Health Day. You only get one day a year where you get to be healthy. On uh, April the 12th, it's Yuri's Night. Who's Yuri, and why does he only get a night? Is that the night that he's going to party like it's 1999? That was 20 years ago. For those of you that can do math. <laughs> April the 17th is International Special Librarian's Day. Hmm, a special librarian. So does that mean she drives a really short book bus? <laughs> I'm curious now. How about April the 21st? It's International Creativity and Innovation Day. You can be only creative on the 21st. Oh, oh, okay, so March the 30th, Earth gets an hour, and then April the 22nd, it gets to have a whole day. So Earth gets to have a day and an hour, yeah, because it's home. April the 23rd is World Book Day, and then April the 25th is World Malaria Day. <laughs> Are we all supposed to get malaria that day? How about the 20? Oh, and the 25th is also World Penguin Day. So apparently if you have malaria, you have to walk like a penguin. And that's how we know we can stay away from you and not contract it. Makes sense to me in my own little mind. May the 3rd is World Press Freedom Day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, why are you putting that in there? Because that hasn't been for eons. May the 5th is International Midwives Day. Okay, and May the 8th is World Red Cross Day. I don't want a Red Cross put on my door. Uh, May the 10th is Lupus Day. I don't want lupus either. May the 12th is International Nurses Day. I'm really wondering who in the hell comes up with these. May the 13th is, although I do like nurses, I have several nurses in my family, so I'm not going to not going to denigrate them. On uh, May the 13th is I E E E E Global Engineering Day. I -E. <laughs> That's usually the sound you make when somebody that engineered a building didn't do a very good job and it starts falling is what I'm thinking. That's uh, why I'm moving along. May the 15th is International Day of Families. And May the 18th is International Museum Day. Go to museums on the 18th of May. Then May the 21st is World Day for Cultural Diversity. Oh, here we go. Yay. Or how about the 22nd, which is International Day of Biological Diversity. All righty. May the 23rd. All right, May bought somebody off too. May the 23rd is World Turtle Day. Hmm. And the 24th is World Schizophrenia Day. Today I identify as a turtle. Am I a day late? <laughs> and May the 25th is Towel Day. Now, <clears throat> you always need your thumb. And don't forget your towel. For those of you out there that understand the obscure reference.
On May the 31st is World No Tobacco Day. Really? Okay. On the uh, 3rd of June is World Bicycle Day. And the the 5th of June is World Environment Day. Wow, the world... Earth gets to have two days and one hour so far. On June the 8th is World Ocean Day. Whoa. And June 14th is World Blood Donor Day. Sorry, I don't donate blood unless I know somebody that's needing the blood because I know the Red Cross makes money off of it over hand and fist. And I'm not going to let them have it. So there. On June the 16th, International Day of the African Child. We need a special day for that. I'm thinking, why can't we do these things all day long or every day, all year long? You know, even if you want to be schizophrenic all year long. Moving along, June the 17th is World Day to Combat uh, Desertification and Drought. How do you fight desertification or desert desertification and drought? How do you fight that? Do you go out and pee on a flower? <laughs> June 20th is World Refugee Day. June 21st is International Yoga Day. Ah, that's the day I get to try and pretzel myself and then call for help because I can't unpretzel myself. Um, June 26th is International Day Against Drug Abuse and Trafficking. Only one day. There's your war on drugs right there. On July the 11th is World Population Day. That's the day that we all kind of go, okay, we've got too much population. What are we going to do about it? Don't worry about it. Them New World Order people, they got it covered. On July the 16th, World Snake Day. And then on July the 28th is World Hepatitis Day. Who? Seriously, who comes up with this? Good Lord. Oh, on Dangleberry's birthday, August the 4th, International Friendship Day. Ah, see, Dangleberry, we haven't forgotten about you. August the 8th is inter Universal and International Infinity Day. The universe is getting involved now. August the 9th is International Day of World's Indigenous People Day. Aren't we all indigenous in one way or another? Just curious. June or August the tenth is International Biodiesel Day. <laughs> These are wow. August the twelfth is International Youth Day. And then August the thirteenth is International Left Handers Day. I have a day. Yay! I mean other than today. But today or August the thirteenth, International Left Handers Day. Booyah! I'm gonna celebrate if I remember. <laughs> August the 14th is World Lizard Day. That's for all those reptilians that are ruling the world, you know, for those of you out there that believes in that. August the 23rd is International Day of Remembrance of the Slave Trade and its Abolition. Just one day. One day. September the 8th is International Literacy Day. And then September the 13th is International Chocolate Day. Chocolate Day. Gotta eat chocolate on that day. I thought that's supposed to be Valentine's Day. Never mind. September the 15th is Software Freedom Day. So your software will be free to do whatever it damn well pleases? You know, my computer pretty much does that anyway. On September the 15th, also, International Day of Democracy. <laughs> oh, great. We have a day where the mob rules. Ain't that special? September the 16th, International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. Are you going to go up there and preserve it? You do realize the ozone layer is way up there. I don't like heights. Just thought I'd throw that in there. <gasps> Ooh, no, we can't have that on a Thursday. Thursday, September the 19th is Talk Like a Pirate Day, but you got to do that on a Friday because Friday's Pastafarian Day and we talk like a pirate on Fridays. On Saturday, September the 21st, it's World Gratitude Day. Be grateful just on that day. On Sunday, September the 21st, is World Car Free Day. Apparently, the cars will be able to roam free, so stay off the sidewalks. September the 29th is Inventor's Day. For those of you feeling rather inventive, you got to hold it up. Hold it in. 
till Sunday, September the 29th. Sorry, banks are closed. Most businesses are, yeah, you're screwed. On uh, October the 1st, it's International Music Day. And October the 2nd is World Farm Animals Day. <laughs> Moo! Oink, 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 oink. On October the 3rd is World Temperance Day. Note that follows right after the farm, farm animals. Mm. And then October the 4th is World Animal Day. Oh, you poor, you poor animals. <laughs> On October the 5th is World Teacher's Day. Oh, don't you realize we're all teachers? Because we're all doing something that someone learns from every single day. The lesson may not necessarily be a positive one. But, yeah, you're teaching every time you're around someone else. Mm-hmm. Anytime you interact, someone else is learning something. You may even learn, too. On October the 10th, it's World Mental Health Day. That's the only day that you can be mentally health. So I'm, I'm good till October the 10th. On October the 16th is World Food Day. I'm not waiting till then to eat. October 17th is International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. I hereby eradicate poverty. You know the, the easiest way to do that? I know it's very simple, simple-minded, but get rid of money and then there's no poverty. That's, that's a thought. On October the 24th, it's United Nations Day. I think I'll be gone that day. <laughs> October the 29th is International Internet Day. Ooh. And on November the 8th, it's World Town Planning Day. So it's just on that day that you can plan your town to take over the world. Um, November the 14th is World Diabetes Day. And also World Philosophy Day. Holy smokes, Batman. That day's double timing, double teaming too. On November the 16th, it's International Day of Tolerance. <laughs> and on November the 19th, it's World Toilet Day, the day where we all honor our toilets. Now, is that the equivalent of praying to the porcelain god? I'm just curious. I used to do that. Thankfully, I haven't done that in a very long time. November the 21st is World Television Day. Uh, on November the 25th, it's International Day for the um, Elimination of Violence Against Women. Oh, like that's going to do it. Where is it? I had someone tell me November the 19th was supposed to be International Men's Day. But I don't see it unless that's Toilet Day. Put the toilet seat down, please. Ha, <laughs> On November the 30th, it's International Computer Security Day. That's the only day where you get to be secure on the computer. Although it's too late because they've already got all your info. But hey, who's counting? No, or December the 1st is World AIDS Day. Okay. Are we going to be nurses' aides or Kool-Aids or what? December the 2nd is International Day for the Abolition of Slavery. I thought we already had one of those. Apparently not. Apparently we need two. December the 5th is International Volunteers Day. So on that day, we all volunteer. And then on December the 5th, it's International Civil Aviation Day. So in other words, you can't have uncivilized aviation on that day. You all must play nice. You all must be civil when you're in your aeroplanes. And finally, the very last holiday in international whatever, whatever, is December the 10th. That's Human Rights Day. It's the only day where they even think about it. So, I don't know about you, but I feel ever so much better now that we have all of these days marked off on the calendars. It really is, you know, just, it, it comforts me. Oh, well. And so, who's smart? Just think of all these smartphones making people smart. Oh, yeah, my smartphone is smarter than me. That's why I just use it as a phone and a texture thing. <laughs> If I try and use it for anything else, it gets a lot smarter than me. <clears throat> smarter than me. There you go. Um, 
Okay. Moving along. Now, seeing as how I did that, that was all basically just to let you know that, yeah, somebody, I'll bet you someone or a group or a committee or what have you, got paid to come up with all of those days. And that leads me to... <laughs> Are you ready for it? From AmericanGreatness.com. This was posted the 23rd of February. An American epidemic. Toxic imbecility. Yeah. I'm a doctor. Okay, fine. I'm a doctor of laws, not of medicine. But I can scroll WebMD as well as anyone. So believe you me, forget all the other scourges ravaging our free republic, even if, nay, especially if, they are afflicting you. Because those scourges are mere distractions from the root cause of our impending doom. No, I'm talking... I'm not talking about climate change, i.e. global warming, or new ice age, or whatever the current false alarm the left is sounding. For that false alarm is itself a symptom of the new scourge. And, at the risk of sounding alarmist, our demise may well occur within the next 12 years. For as President Abraham Lincoln ominously noted, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroy ourselves. And Mr. Lincoln wasn't just talking about Jesse Smollett paying for his hoax hate crime with a check or the 16 felony indictments that I just saw show up on Twitter. So, what is this postmodern plague consuming our nation? It's toxic imbecility, and it's not just our nation. And where is the hot zone where this imbecilic chicken first came home to roost and now appears ready to cook our goose? Well, an educated guess is that it's wherever educators first develop into indoctrinators turning young people's minds into carriers of leftist bumper sticker tropes. Perhaps some of the three billion sitting in New York City's coffers that the Amazonian plutocrat Jeff Bezos didn't steal from hard-working hard folks can now be invested in remedial courses in economics for elected officials. But I digress. Mm, no, honey, selected officials are never going to learn because they're only concerned about what's going into their pocket, and they prefer it to go into their pocket from under a table or behind closed doors. That way they don't have to report it. But back to this. <clears throat> Regardless of the exact location for the ground zero of this toxic imbecility, which ultimately renders its victims' IQs, the scourge's uh, spread is bipartisan. On the left, collusion conspiracy theorists, uh, democratic socialists, which is rather redundant, celebrities, pundits, and the elitist cable media prove toxic imbecility can be an airborne pathogen, as well as spread by human contact with the Washington Post or the New York Times, and other vestiges of so-called respectable journalism. Now, the scourge that manifests itself in the afflicted as an obstinate, irrational belief in injurious idiocies, such as the weaponized lie of Russian collusion delusion, the defamation of the Covington High School's um, Catholic high schoolers, and so many other instances of toxic imbecility. Now, on the right... Useful idiots compound the spread of toxic imbecility through human interaction with, say, a back issue of the now-defunct Weekly Standard, or staring at a screen grab of The Bulwark, and, if untreated, it can lead to afflict or lead the afflicted to follow Max Boot on Twitter and tattooing Never Trump onto their rumps, right beside where their heads entered. Now, other symptoms of toxic imbecility include, but are certainly not limited to, the following. 
a febrile fever, or colloquial term, feeling the burn, as in B-E-R-N, which leaves one seized with prehensile fingers grasping for other people's money. Or a feeling of irrational gratitude when 25,000 jobs won't be coming to town to enrich your neighbors. Or how about a delusion that Chicago is MAGA country where Trump supporters brave sub-zero temperatures to accost celebrities whose shows they don't watch because they're racist homophobes. Or how about this one? It's that persistent aching for open borders everywhere, except in your gated community. Or how about the paranoid belief that POTUS Trump will still skin former Attorney General Jeff Sessions, U.S. Representative Devin Nunes, the NRA, the GOP, the NRCC, the NRSC, and hell, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, are all Russian assets. Or how about conflating contrary views with violence and hate speech, demanding safe spaces for such differing ideas, and generalized, free-floating anxiety about the dangers of free speech? Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. How about being possessed by Trump derangement syndrome? It's a disorder in and of itself, and often manifested by espousing one's chilling sense that the Putin-sponsored, illegitimate imposition upon America of POTUS Trumpel-Stilskin means that we are all going to die sooner than climate change can kill us. Egad! We're all going to die! You know, that's part of living. You know, at least in this reality. Tragically, the symptoms of toxic imbecility appear to be endless. Fortunately, the vaccine, for those not yet infected, and the antidote, for those now suffering the scourge, is relatively succinct, readily available, and thanks to the internet, largely free. Lead liberal. Let's rewind that just a sec. Read liberal doses of Edmund Burke, Russell Kirk, William F. Buckley Jr., and Victor David or Davis Hanson. Escape your safe space and embrace reality. Yes, it's that simple. And I know it sounds really simple to say, but how about unlearning? what you were taught to be live because odds are there's a lie in the middle of that word for a reason there's a thought so thank you Thaddeus G. McCotter for that one that was rather fun rather ingenious and yes there is an awful lot of toxic imbecility going on in the world and I'm sure there are quite a few that would accuse me of being infected by it. And there are times when, yes, I do have to admit that uh, I have exhibited imbecilic behavior. But usually it's to get a giggle out of somebody. Why? Because I can. That's why. Checking out Twitter real quick before I go back to my pocket. Hmm. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah true okay oh i got some notifications what's going on woohoo woohoo okay i uh, did watch a video just a little bit ago and i shared it in the uh chat both in the rlm chat and a few other places and uh, it's all wars or bankers wars and really seriously when you when you watch that video and listen to what he's saying He connects the dots very well. (coughs) Problem is, there's an awful lot of people that are suffering from that toxic imbecility and are going to go, Nuh-uh! And and support our troops. You know, I will support our troops by explaining to them, Honey, being patriotic and going and fighting and dying in a war over there is not the same thing. You know, you can be patriotic to a friend, to an idea, to your country, but do not be patriotic to the government. Really? 
because the government sure as hell doesn't give two shits about you. Now, seeing as how I've done the international days, let's go check out PIGazette.com and see what they got to say about this date in history. Oh, thank God, OAC is no longer the pick of the day. Now, for their word of the day, Congress. It's a sorry collection of losers, snoozers, and abusers who spend quality time looting taxpayers and infringing liberty. Why do they do this? Because we have toxic imbecility going on and we let them. You know, according to the Constitution, we're supposed to be the boss applesauce, and yet we let them get away with this crap. Hmm. It's kind of a sad state of affairs, don't you think? In the quotable quotes section, like psychoanalysis, constitutional jurisprudence has become a game without rules. By defining the plain meaning of words, ignoring context and history, and using a little ingenuity, you can make the Constitution mean anything you like. That's from Joseph Sobran. Thanks, Joseph. Yeah, it can be contorted. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. This date in history, the 8th of March, 1934. Edwin Hubble expands our understanding of the vastness of space with a photo that shows as many galaxies as our Milky Way has stars. Now, <clears throat> I don't know that I think that was was yeah 1934 that was before um the uh computer digital whatever computer digital imaging yeah that's what that is so okay I look up and I can see all kind of stars upon theirs so and I I tried to count them when I was a kid and I got dizzy and stopped okay this date in history, the 8th of March, 1958. A slow starter, but a fast finisher. A thoroughbred named Silky Sullivan gives lead or lead horse a 40-length head start before pouring it on to win by three at Santa Anita. Holy smokes. And that's the only ones they got on here today. So, thank you, Hambo and Porcus, for your little inventiveness that you threw in for the day. I truly do appreciate it, guys. Now, I'm going to go back to my pocket and see what other kind of fun stuff I threw in there. Just because. Did you know that Fakie Book is starting to um, um, like delete accounts of people that are calling out the vaccines and that are anti-vaxxers? It's true. They are. It's like craziness, I tell you. Okay, so I had one other thing that I wanted to get to. Um, do I want to go there? I need to find one that's not really, really, really long. And that one is really pretty long, so I can't go there. Um, hmm. Hmm, where, oh where? Peace officer or revenue ranger? Hmm, do I want to go there? Let's see. Because, yeah, I've been seeing lots of... Okay. Nope. 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 Not going to go there. Huh. What am I going to do? How about I look in my recommended? See what they got. Oh, hey, from wired.co.uk, right up top. Or do I want to go with this one? Nope. Hmm, let's go with this one. Hmm. Ooh, okay. This goes with toxic imbecility, so we'll go with it. This is from sciencealert.com. Did you know that the brain literally starts eating itself when it doesn't get enough sleep? This is from the 2nd of March of this year. So, the need for sleep goes far beyond simply replenishing our energy levels every 12 hours. 
Our brains actually change states when we sleep to clear away the toxic byproducts of neural activity left behind during the day. You know, all that toxic imbecility that you got to put up with. And weirdly enough, the same process occur or starts to occur in brains that are chronically sleep deprived too, except it's kicked into hyperdrive. Researchers have found that persistently poor sleep causes the brain to clear a significant amount of neurons and synaptic connections, and recovering sleep might not be able to reverse the damage. Now, a team led by neuroscientist Michelle Bellisi from the Marche Polytechnic University in Italy examined the mammalian brain's response to poor sleeping habits and found a bizarre similarity between the well-rested and sleepless mice. Like the cells elsewhere in your body, the neurons in your brain are being constantly refreshed by two different types of um, glial cell. That's uh, support cells that are often called the glue of the nervous system. Now, the microglial cells are responsible for clearing out old and worn out cells via the process of phagocystis, meaning to devour in Greek. Why didn't you just say that in the first place? Now, astrocystis' job is to prune unnecessary synapses or connections in the brain to refresh and reshape its wiring. And we've known that this process occurs when we sleep and to clear away the neurological wear and tear of the day. But now it appears that the same thing happens when we start to lose sleep. But rather than being a good thing, the brain goes overboard with clearing and starts to harm itself. So think of it like Gar the garbage being cleared out while you're asleep versus someone coming into your house after several sleepless nights and indiscriminately tossing out your television, your fridge, the family dog. Okay, two of them I would get up and kick their butt for, so long as there's no Legos all over the floor, because those hurt. Ooh, maybe I'd just have to scatter Legos around the floor and nobody would dare come in my house in the middle of the night. Ha <laughs> ha! Now... We show for the first time that portions of synapsis are literally eaten by astrocytes because of sleep loss. To figure this out, the researchers imaged the brains of four groups of mice. One group was left to sleep for six to eight hours or well rested. Another was periodically woken up from sleep, spontaneously awake. The third group was kept awake for an extra eight hours or sleep deprived. And the final group was kept awake for five days straight. Wow. When the researchers compared the activity of the astrocytes across the four groups, they, they identified it in 5.7% of the synapses in the well-rested mouse brains and 7.3% of the spontaneously awake mouse brains. Now, in the sleep-deprived and chronically sleep-deprived mice, they noticed something different. The astrocytes had increased their activity to actually eating parts of the synapses like microglia and microglial cells, excuse me, and that eat waste, and it's a process known as astrocytic phagocystis. Wow. Now, in the sleep-deprived mice brains, the astrocysts were found to be active across 8.4% of the synapses. And in the chronically sleep-deprived mice, a whopping 13.5%. Now, as she told New Scientist, most of the synapses that were getting eaten in the two groups of sleep-deprived mice were the largest ones, which tend to be the oldest and most heavily used, like old pieces of furniture, which is probably a good thing. But when the team checked the activity of the microglial cells across the four groups, they found that it also ramped up in the chronically sleep-deprived groups. And that's a worry, because unbridled microglial activity has been linked to brain diseases like Alzheimer's and other forms of neurodegeneration. So we find that astrocystic phagocystism, phagos, yeah, that... <laughs> <laughs> is mainly a presynaptic element in large synapses, and it occurs after both acute and chronic sleep loss, but not after um, spontaneous awake.
suggesting that it may promote the housekeeping and recycling of worn components of heavily used strong synapses. Now, by contrast, only chronic sleep loss activates micro microglial cells and promotes their phagocystic activity. <clears throat> Are you getting this? Wow. Suggesting that extended sleep disruption may prime microglial and perhaps predispose the brain to other forms of insult. Wow. Insult on the brain? Holy smokes. Now, many questions still remain, such as if this process is replicated in human brains. I'm not going to I'm not going to try and do that study. Thank you. And if catching up on sleep can actually reverse the damage. I don't know if they if it eats the older, stronger synapses. Maybe that's gone forever. I don't know. That's weird. But the fact that Alzheimer's deaths have increased by an incredible 50 percent since 1999 together with the struggle that many of us have in getting a good night's sleep, it's mean, uh, it means it's something we need to get to the bottom of and very fast. And I'm thinking the Alzheimer's deaths also has something to do with some of the nasty juju in big pharma stuff that is through the roof prescription-wise. Just my thoughts on that. So... That phase has passed. What phase is that? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Rob, a few strategically placed Legos, especially if you get the clear ones, those clear Legos. Oh, dude, those are those are just cruel. Let me tell you. Oh, my. That's a good meme there, Grimmy. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Freaker Friday evening. Be sure to stick around because later on this evening is going to be Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball. Good time will be had by all. I'm probably not going to be staying up that late. But, you know, I'll probably listen to a podcast somewhere. Actually, I've gotten to the point now where I start listening to the podcast while I'm doing cleanup in the kitchen at work. It's cool. I can get away with that kind of stuff. Booyah! So that's how I catch up on my Hal and the Freakers and some of Flasher's stuff is while I'm at work and doing dishes. Nobody wants to mess with me when I'm doing dishes because I might make them help. <laughs> oh, well. In any case, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, Flasher is going to be on with the Dork Table. Have a good time with that, Flasher. I will have to catch the podcast because I will be at work. On uh, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy's going to be jumping on the radio. And he's going to be um, playing some blues for us. And I'm sure there's going to be some absolutely awesome trivia going on in the Chitty Chat, to which I will probably attempt to answer a couple and then sit back and go, hell with it. I'm just going to knit. <laughs> Because, yeah, slow internet and all that crap. And spelling. Spelling is not necessarily one of my greater talents. I spell phonetically. What can I say? Then, right after Grimm on Sunday, will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Always, always very good brain food. Sometimes you have to listen to it again, you know, kind of as a leftover kind of thing, like what Grimm does on Monday evenings with his little leftovers that he puts in there, a little bit of brain food there that's had time to sit and simmer and stew and all the flavors mingle. Sometimes you have to listen to Hal a couple of times before you really get what he's saying, and, or at least I do. But it's always really good brain food. Then on Tuesday, see now I'm getting to where I can remember everything that's going on. Kind of, sort of, maybe. On Tuesday, in a perfect world at 1 p.m. Eastern Time with Flash and Vinny. That is if Flash and Vinny are still playing. And I will be back next week, Wednesday, for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition of The Rocket Chair here on reallibertymedia.com. Now... I see I still have a couple of minutes left. So, what do I have that I can get into? I know. 
Here we go. I'm just going to kind of touch on this. I think this is kind of cool. It's from March the 2nd of this year from Yup That Exists dot com. It's a mushroom that eats plastic. Yeah. It looks like George Carlin is right again because even more than 10 years after his death in his famous Saving the Planet stand up comedy act, he takes the piss out of the political environmentalist with his hilarious yet eerily prescient perspective on plastic. The earth doesn't share our prejudice towards plastic. Plastic came out of the earth. The earth probably sees plastic as just another one of its children. Could be the only reason the earth allowed us to be spawned from it in the first place. It wanted plastic for itself. And now there is a mushroom from the Amazon rainforest that is capable of subsisting on plastic alone. Booyah! I'm going to go ahead and share this article with you so you guys can finish reading it. And I'm going to get the heck out of here because I got some grits and gravy and strangled eggs to cook for supper. So, I will catch you all in the funny papers. And until then, please remember, not only do I care about you, but I really do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. Oh, before I say goodnight, <laughs> I just scrolled down. Grimmy said that Vinny will be taking a few weeks off. So no Vinny on the RLM radio. So that's it. Okay, now I'm out of here. Goodnight. night. <laughs>